ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. AMC stock is down about 2% at the time of recording this video. Now here in this video, we are going to be getting into everything you need to know specifically around AMC stock and what we're setting ourselves up for coming into tomorrow. So hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Now, first things first, this is the first day that Adam Aaron has acknowledged the brutal destruction destruction of value we have seen in AMC stock. Adam Aaron has said uh, his number one priority is getting uh, AMC back to a good place that basically the box office slump that we are in right now is the reason why AMC stock has not performed well and unfortunately I don't think that's exactly true. I think he's taking way too much of the blame and putting it on the box office rather than well, management making bad management choices. So my personal opinion, but this is the first time he has spoke about the stock being so low. And I do think he maybe now sees like, hey, we have to do something to get AMC stock higher because the math has not changed. AMC has a lot of debt coming due in 2026 and no way to pay that. No way at all. Even if they refinance, they're still going to have to pay a large chunk in 2026. If AMC stock does not recover, theoretically, if it never goes higher, well, Adam Aaron and AMC are in a very bad position because AMC will default on its 2026 debt payments that do come due, regardless of who likes that or who doesn't like that. The silver lining is, hey, if you could potentially go out of business by 2026, if you could be in a really bad position by 2026, which is about two years away now, that means management has to get AMC stock higher. They have to do what they don't want to do, and that is give the markets confirmation that they will not be diluting shareholders. That is by far the number one thing that is keeping money out of AMC stock is the constant rounds of dilution that we have seen on a almost you know quarter by quarter basis over the last couple of quarters. And the latest round of dilution that happened after AMC's last earnings about three months ago has started this downward slide from $11.50 per share down to where we are currently at at $4.38 per share. Like over the last three months, AMC stock did not go from $11.50 to $4.38 because markets one day just woke up and said, there's not a lot of movies going to theaters. Uh, we should sell AMC stock down 70% over the next three months. That's not how these things work. The last round of dilution just showed the total disregard or lack of fundamental management that the management of AMC has for the stock of AMC. And uh, a lot of retail investors have since walked away from the trade, have since sold the stock. And when you don't have retail no longer backing the stock up the way that you used to, you cannot just continue to dump uh, on shareholders, right? Now, don't let me be too jaded here or anyone else be too jaded here because recently, if you've been an investor in AMC, well, you know that the dilution has been negative. Dilution is not always going to be a super negative if it does fundamentally change the company or help the company. Remember, buy, buy low, sell high. Well, a lot of people like to buy high, sell low. What, what AMC is essentially doing when they sell stock at multi-year lows is they are selling low right? They're, they're selling their, their equity in the company and, and diluting your equity in the company at a very, very low price. And when that ultimately does happen, that is a uh, big, big problem, right? That's, that's not what you want um, uh, to be faced with. So that is definitely a little bit of a problem. Um, uh, that is basically all of AMC's problem. So we'll see what does happen, what transpires over the next couple of uh, months here. I am more optimistic than not that we will see AMC's management make the right decisions because ultimately they have to or their jobs are at stake if AMC cannot make 
those uh, payments coming due in 2026. So uh, go ahead and keep that in mind. Now, a brief run through of the Ortex data here. We have 9.46% short interest of free float, $106.22 million worth of short positions currently in AMC stock. Days to cover at 1.24, 23.71 million shares currently sold short. Shares out on loan, 19.36 million. Cost to borrow fees, 1.06%. Utilization of 34.29% and a short score of 56.38 out of 100. As far as the option activity today here in AMC stock, you do have 62.44% of the volume in the options market going towards the call side and 37.56% of the volume to the put side. Interesting flow sentiment. You are seeing two orders totaling $231,000 with a positive order value of 0%. So nothing really happening here in the land of options. Uh, that is for sure. Now, um, as far as the stock twit sentiment gauge for AMC uh, stock, and I just want to reiterate, after everything that I just said, again, I am confident AMC stock will get better, that there will be better days ahead coming for AMC, but I do think um, you may have to see a little bit more uh, of a docile stock, maybe the stock not doing much for a period of time or even falling a little bit more. Um, but I do think today's acknowledgement from Adam Aaron shows that he is is literally looking at the stock at at four dollars per share as that is too low, because, again, fundamentally, AMC will not survive if they cannot raise capital. It might it's going to take a while. AMC is not going to go bankrupt you know, a couple quarters down the line. It's going to take a while. But if AMC can never raise capital higher than $4 per share, they do not have enough shares that they could even sell at $4 per share to pay off their debt. And they're not going to make enough free cash flow or profits to pay off the debt as well. That's a definitive fact, especially with the box office that we have over the next 12 months. 2025 looks to be a little bit better, but still, it's probably not until 2026 where things get actually back to somewhat of a normalcy, or maybe we could actually have a box office boom coming in 2026. But I personally don't think that comes in 2025. And if it does, it's towards the second half of the year. And well, if AMC is still diluting shareholders anyways by that time, well, it's probably not going to make a huge difference what the fundamental numbers are doing. Now, AMC stock is trading at a pretty low valuation. Um, about $894 million is the total market cap in AMC. So uh, it, it is definitely on the lower side, even now with the market cap where it is for a larger company to potentially buy out. AMC would not be out of the question, you know, uh, with, with the valuation sitting right here. Of course, when you do uh, buy out a company, you have to buy out the debt as well. So that's about $9 billion worth of debt. Some people think it's only like $5 billion of debt. No, including everything, AMC has $9 billion worth of debt. They're never going to be able to pay that off based on their fundamentals alone. So keep that in mind. Now, here is the activity on stock twits for AMC stock. If you look at sentiment, that is sitting at 33. Yesterday, you were bullish at 60. That's because AMC stock was, you know, having a relatively... Um, decent day yesterday the the last you you rallied like 10 percent or so in the last couple of days so that's why some of the sentiment has been a little bit better recently but it's going back to the bearish side here on the day today message volume is normal at 45 which is better than yesterday at 35 so that's some good news participation ratio is also at 45 that's a lot better than also where it has been recently so a little bit of good news on that front as well well, so now let's go ahead and look at the AI investor sentiment survey. We are going to get a new one coming out this week. That is going to be on Thursday. I'm looking to see uh, at least what I expect the bulls to pick up, the neutral investors to pick up, and the bears are probably going to fall a little bit as stocks have once again hit new all-time highs. It'll be interesting, though, if neutral investors pick up, the bulls uh, lose a little bit here and the bearish investors also pick up that would uh, tell me that maybe the markets are in a little bit better of a place after all if you look at the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average uh, this is up a little bit today. It's pretty much flat on the day today. You're only at 67, which at the high, you were at about 87 back here at the end of December. So you have seen the average stock getting pummeled to start 
2024. So not exactly uh, everything doing well out there. Even though the SPY is hitting new all-time highs, yeah, it's still a pretty rough market overall. Now, if you take a look at this Friday's expiration, I do think it's possible we could see a bounce, especially if today and after hours, Netflix has some good earnings. Now, AMC and Netflix not exactly correlated. I'm not expecting a big sympathy move from AMC based on Netflix numbers, but I do think Netflix can broadly affect the markets just because, I mean, you know, there's real implications there. If, if people are canceling Netflix... That's a problem. If people are adding Netflix, maybe the situation is not as bad as what some people fear. Stockle tracker data for AMC you have about 8,200 calls currently in the money, 77, uh, almost 78,000 calls out the money. In the money puts at 25,000, out the money puts at 17,000. So decent amount of option activity here, but uh, you have seen a lot of calls go out the money that were previously in the money. So could look a little bit better there. Again, we are going to have Netflix earnings today and after hours, Intuitive Surgical, Texas Instruments, Steel Dynamics, Baker Hughes, Stride, CN, and a couple banks. Uh, tomorrow morning, AT&T, ASML, Abbott, Progressive, uh, Kimberly Clark, the list goes on there. And then Tesla tomorrow in after hours, IBM, ServiceNow, Sands, and LAM Research. These are going to be your important ones. And I do think these stocks could move quite a dang bit. So definitely something uh, to be watching for in the days ahead. And these stocks will affect the broader market. Same is true with Intel, Visa, Capital One, and American Express that report Thursday, and then American Express Friday pre-market. So some big earnings. You are officially in earnings season. And uh, I mean, if you think this week's uh, exciting, next week's going to be your big dogs and a ton of earnings that we'll be reporting. Now, as far as your 10-year treasury yield today, that is up about four and a half basis points. So uh, that's obviously not doing stocks any favors today, but some stocks are doing okay, regardless of a slight rise in 10-year treasury yields. Fed rate monitor tool, as you can see here, let's go ahead and uh, update this. For March 20th, it's neck and neck between a pause or the first rate cut. I think the data coming out this week will really solidify that with GDP, GDP, and then especially on Friday with your PCE, personal spending and personal income numbers that will be coming out. But currently, 48.1% chance of a cut and 50.9% chance of a continued pause. For the entirety of 2024, you are pricing in, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six rate cuts for 2024. Odds of that sits at 35.1%. The odds of uh, five rate cuts at 32.7%. Um, and then the odds of seven rate cuts at 14.2%. And the odds of four rate cuts sitting at 14.2% as well. So uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty here. We want to see the inflation data for the first time coming this Friday. You could see three and six month annualized core PCE under 2%, which is a very good sign and will give the Fed likely room to start cutting rates in March if they would like, if the economy does falter a little bit from now until March, or if they just think the job is complete. We'll have to see. Friday has some pretty big implications. Netflix has not reported earnings yet. Uh, markets are currently closed. Uh, it should be coming out here in the next couple of minutes. If there's anything notable, I will bring you that information. Markets are pricing in about 10% for Netflix earnings. Pretty straightforward. If it's good, the markets are going to react good. If it's bad, markets are going to re react bad. And it's pretty straightforward and simple in that regard. There will be uh, you know, a large broad market move. Netflix is the first big tech uh, kind of stock that we'll be reporting. So it will really set the tone, especially for Tesla coming tomorrow and then the rest of big tech uh, next week. Now, good news is if we do have good earnings for Netflix, which is kind of my base case assumption that the chart looks really good on Netflix. It's still not at all time highs. Um, analysts are, are pretty bullish overall, but I don't think it's too bullish or too optimistic. Um, AMC stock is sitting with an RSI of 27.80. So definitely you could see a continued move higher from here. That that would not surprise me um, all too much. And if you do see the, the RSI go positive, typically that does lead to, you know, 20 to 50% rallies. So that would 
not surprise me as well. But I do think Adam Aaron, again, just to recap, is under the right assumption now that he needs to focus on getting the share price higher in AMC stock. Honestly, I hope he waits until um, June to give us the announcement of, you know, a pause of dilution. Um, maybe that would be, you know, June 1st through the, the rest of 2024. I think that would be at the best possible time because, you know, by then you should have a couple rate cuts in and hopefully the markets have not collapsed and and hopefully, you know, the average stock, small and mid-cap stocks are seeing some inflows again and that would be some really, really good news. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.